between the Arkansas Razorbacks and University of Georgia's. Both teams are virtually mirror images of the other. Both enter the Classic with 9-2 records. Both use the mere offense to generate powerful running attacks, and both utilize all intense defenses with surprising success. Vince Dooley's Bulldogs won their last six games, topped by a route of our Georgia Tech. Frank Royal's Razorbacks were winners in five straight. The capper of big upset over second-ranked Texas A&M. That gave the Razorbacks the Southwest Conference co-championship and the Cotton Bowl host role. And finally, both teams will attempt to do to the other what they've done so well all season long. Run right at their opponent until something gives. Therein lies the key to this contest as the University of Georgia's Junkyard Dogs play the University of Arkansas's Wild Hogs in the 40th Cotton Bowl Classic. Before a sellout crowd enjoying balmy spring-like weather, the main event, the 40th annual Cotton Bowl Classic between the Wild Hogs and the Junkyard Dogs. Georgia wins the toss, elects to receive, and junior quarterback Ray Goff, number 10, gets things off to a smashing start. On the second play, he rolls right, cuts back behind the wall of white. Twenty-five yards later, Goff is hauled down by safety Tommy Harris. The Bulldogs strike the first blow. A few plays later, looks the pass, but keeps again. This time going for 17 yards and another Georgia first down. The quarterback is stunned on the tackle. He's replaced for several plays by Matt Robinson. Still, the Bulldogs move steadily downfield behind superb blocking and a good inside effort by Glenn Harrison, the All-Southeastern Conference running back. After eating up huge chunks of Arkansas real estate, the Bulldogs are stopped short of seven points when in the shadow of their goal, Arkansas's hustling, swarming defense comes alive for the first time. Stopped cold and forced to settle for a field goal attempt, Georgia calls on Allen Levitt. The Bulldogs are on the scoreboard, 3 to nothing. Arkansas was in a 10 nothing hole after the first quarter, but the Razorbacks finished with a flourish just before halftime. Arkansas coach Frank Royals could take consolation from a strange bit of Cotton Bowl history. In the last six games, the first team to score lost the game. However, the Razorbacks, who had the ball for only eight plays in the entire first quarter, are not going anywhere against the tough, tenacious Georgia defense, who called themselves the Junkyard Dogs. Although both teams had a shot at the ball when Arkansas quarterback Scott Bull puts it up for Teddy Barnes, And Georgia's Chip Miller gets in the traffic pattern. If Arkansas fans found events hard to swallow in the first period, the Porkers' first possession of the second quarter is even harder to digest. A vicious safety blitz by number 42, Billy Krug, persuades Bull to cough up the football. Tackle Ronnie Swoop's recovery hands the Junkyard Dogs the first big break of the game. The ball on their own 42-yard line.
Here are the Bulldogs with ace passer Matt Robinson at the helm. Go for broke. A solitary Gaines Maureen, number 81, juggles, then drops a certain touchdown pass. But the Bulldog Blitzkrieg is only momentarily halted. After conferring with Coach Dooley, Matt Robinson makes the most of the drive, completing a flurry of short passes to the Razorback 21. Then rolling right and double pumping, Robinson hits flanker Gene Washington over the middle, and the Bulldogs have the first touchdown of the Cotton Bowl. Underdog Georgia, the surprise team of the Southeastern Conference, jumps in front of favorite Arkansas 10 to nothing. On the touchdown play, Washington ran a basic post pattern and had come wide open in the middle where Robinson found his impatient target. Hey, Matt, here I am. Robinson was the Bulldogs' regular quarterback in 1974, leading the SEC in passing, but he was injured in fall practice and now was used primarily in passing situations. The touchdown to Washington shows why. Now behind by 10 points, Frank Royal's Razorbacks begin to move on offense for the first time today. But once again, Georgia's junkyard defense holds and forces a punt. Georgia's Mark Mitchell is literally swarmed under by wild hogs. On the very next play, Robinson, trying to avoid heavy pressure, loses the ball, and the Porkers have their first big break of the Cotton Bowl. It would by no means be their last. The man who made the recovery, number 76, senior linebacker Hal McAfee, would have quite an afternoon. McAfee would recover two fumbles, intercept the pass, and be named defensive player of the game. Arkansas gets the ball deep in Georgia territory. No matter, the Bulldog defense continues its dogged, junkyard dogged efforts. They actually force Arkansas backward from their own 15. And finally, the Razorbacks settle for Steve Little's field goal and three points. But Arkansas does break the scoring drought at last. Here with the fragile one touchdown lead and the balance of the game suddenly shifting toward Arkansas, Georgia coach Vince Dooley gambles and calls for a trick play. Dooley later explains that Georgia hoped to regain the momentum with this bit of daring do. Dooley calls it the shoestring, and Georgia defeated Vanderbilt with it earlier in the season. Lining up without a huddle, quarterback Goff, bottom left, bends near the ball as if to tie his shoe. Then suddenly shovels the ball to Washington in the backfield, who in turn was to give it to his tight end on a reverse with the option to run or throw. But the ball never reaches Dick Appleby, for Arkansas reacts swiftly. Washington fumbles, and the ubiquitous Hal McAfee falls on the ball on the Georgia 13. If Arkansas wasn't fooled, everybody else was, even the cameramen. None of them were shooting film when the surprise play started. Scott Bull and Ike Forte are quick to capitalize on Arkansas's heavy defensive work. After Forte took a swing pass to the one, the junkyard dogs dug in again, but the damage was done. Forte takes a pitch out, avoids a blitzing safety, turns the corner, and crashes into the end zone for the touchdown that ties the score at 10 apiece. In an incredible comeback, the Razorbacks scored 10 points in 37 seconds. All of a sudden, the old line, it's a brand new ball game applied to the 40th Cotton Bowl.
Frank Oil's boys left the field at the half with spirits soaring. And, well, they should. For only a half minute before, they seemed to be set up for an upset. The Bulldogs were hamstrung on their own shoestring by McAfee and company, and the momentum of this football game has very definitely shifted to Arkansas. Both defenses slug it out throughout the third quarter, but after 15 minutes of open warfare, it's apparent that the hustling hogs are winning this battle of attrition. More, the Razorback running attack, sparked by number 85, Ike Forte, begins to take charge. Forte's fantastic extra effort isn't all Arkansas has going in the backfield. For number 42, Roland Fuchs has come on strong, starting in place of injured star Jerry Eckwood, the sophomore who ran for five straight 100-yard games before going down with a knee injury. Long lane Scott Bull has been a real find at quarterback. Since Scott took over for injured regular Mike Kirkland, the Porters have won eight of nine. With Bull's accurate passes and the running of Forte and Fuchs, Arkansas moves deep into Bulldog territory late in the third quarter. Then Georgia's outstanding safety Billy Krug, number 42, hits Bull as he pitches back and the Hogs are stopped by a fumble. The beer formation requires a lot of ball handling, and that handling better be good, especially against folks like the Junkyard Dogs. However, on this play, the ball was ruled dead, and Arkansas retained possession. Although the ruling doesn't get unanimous approval. Steve Little tries a 51-yard field goal. It's short, and that's as close as Arkansas comes to scoring in the third period. Georgia, though, came even closer. On the very next series, Robinson, off a nice play-action fake, rolls right with plenty of time to allow Richard Appleby to get deep. But the receiver drops what could have been another touchdown pass for Georgia. Still 10-10 after three quarters, and then the Razorbacks had their best fourth quarter in bowl history. Pressure defenses bother both passing games and play havoc with the delicate timing between thrower and catcher. However, on the first Arkansas series of the fourth quarter, Scott Bull throws a perfect pass over the middle to Freddie Douglas, and the little receiver makes a difficult catch despite close coverage. It's good for 35 yards and an Arkansas first down on the Georgia 12. Another look at the play shows Bull through accurately despite very heavy pressure from the Bulldogs. Great individual efforts on both ends combined for probably the key play of the second half. Three plays later, Bull pitches out to Roland Fuchs. Who hurdles one defender and lopes into the end zone. The 10-10 tie that existed since the half is broken. Now Georgia goes to the air, but the results aren't good. Matt Robinson is close on one play, but on the next one to Mark Wilson, it's Howard Sampson, number 31, with the interception. now for the clincher, Arkansas brings in a fresh back, Michael Forrest, who shreds the midsection of the junkyard defense on one long run. Then behind a lead block from Forte, virtually walks into the end zone to give Arkansas a two-touchdown lead.
interception is useless now for Georgia, and the Red Shirts pour in on Matt Robinson. The key to Arkansas's defensive domination in the second half was that the Razorbacks began controlling Georgia's strong side running attack. The alert Wild Hog defense tuned in, met the challenge, and took away Georgia's biggest and best weapon. Now the Porkers can tee off on Matt Robinson. But there was still time for more drama. A Georgia punt and the Razorback safety, Bull Busby, failed to get together. But it still comes up Arkansas. Now Arkansas tucks the game away with a 12-play, 68-yard drive, consuming nearly seven of the eight minutes left to play. Their ground attack working with mechanized perfection. The Razorbacks run over and through the outweighed and exhausted Bulldog defensive unit. Ike Forte playing the game of his life. Rushes for 119 yards, most ever by a Razorback in a bowl, and more than the entire Georgia team. final carry, a thing of beauty. Taking a pitch out and gliding behind his line, waiting while they execute their blocks. He suddenly streaks forward, falling over the goal line for his second touchdown and Arkansas's third in the space of only five minutes. It was a fitting ending for Forte, who along with Jerry Eckwood was of uncertain status going into the game. Eckwood's injury kept him out, but Forte hardly seemed bothered by the dislocated toes that caused him to miss some playing time during the season. Appropriately, Ike Forte was named Offensive Player of the Game for his great performance. His second touchdown had given the Razorbacks a commanding 31-10 lead. In his final series of the game, the Georgia offense manages one more threat in the form of two complete passes from Matt Robinson to Mark Wilden. But so complete was the Porker defensive hold in the final half that Arkansas didn't allow the Bulldog offense to penetrate past its own 30 and allowed only two first downs. But in those first 29 minutes, the Bulldogs had been stepping in high cotton. Then they tripped on their own shoestring and lost the game to a very talented Arkansas football team. In one of the great comebacks in bowl history, Arkansas had decisively beaten Georgia and even the series between Southwest and Southeast. Each had won eight games with a tie in a long, exciting series of Cotton Bowl Classic meetings. For Frank Royals, it was a 10th bowl appearance in 18 coaching years at Arkansas. Thus, on the first day of January 1976, after one of his greatest victories, Frank Royals walked into a victorious locker room. A scene few people would have considered possible a couple of months earlier when Arkansas had a 4-2 one-loss record and was being written off as a championship contender. But like the junkyard dogs of Georgia, the wild hogs of Arkansas liked it better. In the